Gwyneth Paltrow, The Narcissist in Court. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Well, if she's not painting herself gold and appearing in the buff, she's trying to convince you to buy candles that smell of her tuppence. I've established elsewhere that Gwyneth Paltrow is a narcissist and she was subjected to a good old H.G. roast. If you haven't explored my roasts, well, given that your chestnuts should be roasting on an open fire, I would encourage you to go and look into them. You'll find a playlist containing several most entertaining. Gwyneth Paltrow recently won a court case against a 76-year-old optometrist arising out of a ski crash, and I provided you with analysis of that at the time. But it's reappeared again as a consequence of a television programme that's been created in relation to it, a documentary. And this provides us with a further opportunity to understand more about the particular behaviours of the narcissist that is Gwyneth Paltrow and the way that she conducts herself. The report by Daniel Bates reads, Gwyneth Paltrow has been called out for her bare-knuckle legal tactics in a new documentary about her ski collision trial that took place last March. The upcoming documentary claims that the Goop founders' lawyers were unkind and unfair during the case brought by Terry Sanderson, 76, who claimed that she hit him from behind in 2016 at the Deer Valley Ski Resort in Utah and left him with four broken ribs and a permanent brain injury. Sanderson's former partner, Carleen Davidson, says in Gwyneth vs. Terry, The Ski Crash Trial, that it broke my heart that Paltrow's attorneys turned his daughters against each other. She says that Paltrow only won the high-profile case because the Dury in Park City, Utah, home to the Sundance Film Festival, was slanted by her celebrity. After eight days of testimony, the jury took just two hours to find that Sanderson was 100% to blame for the crash and awarded Paltrow the token $1 she was seeking in damages. Also appearing in the film is Samantha Dury, and, uh, who is very aptly named, who was one of the jurors who ruled in Paltrow's favour, who said that Sanderson lost credibility when Paltrow's lawyers played a montage of photos of him going on vacation after the accident, which he claimed ruined his life. Gwyneth vs. Terry, which streams on Max in the US and Discovery Plus in the United Kingdom on Monday, gives fresh insight into a David vs. Goliath battle which transfixed the nation. The Goliath was Paltrow, the 50-year-old founder of the luxury wellness brand Goop, who is worth $200 million and won an Oscar for her role in Shakespeare in Love. Her adversary, Sanderson, was twice divorced and a retired optometrist who claimed she let out a blood-curdling scream when she hit him while distracted by waving to her children Apple and Moses, who were also on the slopes. Paltrow strongly denied this. Denial, nullification of threat to control, had always maintained that Sanderson was the one who went into the back of her. The documentary revisits the brutal cross-examination of Sanderson by Paltrow's lawyers from a Utah law firm, usually hired by health insurers, to dispute patients' claims. Now, of course, whilst the lawyers adopt their approach, they do so pursuant to instruction, and therefore Gwyneth Paltrow will have wanted to ensure that these lawyers were utilised as attack dogs, demonstrating the absence of her emotional empathy. Sanderson, a father of three, was asked by Paltrow's attorney, Steve Owens, why his youngest daughter, Jenny, didn't speak to him for 13 years. Now, you might have to ask yourself, what in the dickens has that got to do with the issue of them having a crash on a ski slope? Naturally, they're going to try and portray Sanderson as a particularly unpleasant individual who would tell Porky Pies, and thus was telling Porky Pies in relation to this accident. He was also asked about whether, as Jenny claimed in a deposition, he was controlling and abusive towards her. A tearful Davison says in the documentary, he, Sanderson, was very close with his girls, they loved him. When they turned his daughters against each other, that bothered me a lot, because I all knew those girls. It broke my heart, 
that was unfair, that was unkind, not an accurate description at all of what was happening with that family. Davidson insisted that Sanderson's personality change after the crash had to have been created by something. She says it was an overnight kind of thing, so it had to be the accident. He couldn't stay as energised and connected, so he pulled away and pushed me away, almost to save me from having to deal with whatever was going on with him. Wiping away tears, she admitted that she still had feelings for Sanderson. Davison said, I didn't want that relationship to end and to see afterwards it didn't have to. I guess that was the harder part, to realise something could have happened there. I could have stayed with the man I adore. Samantha Dury, the juror, says in the documentary that she found Paltrow's evidence convincing, especially when the actress described thinking briefly she was being sexually assaulted when Sanderson hit her from behind. Dury said, when something like that happens, when you feel like you're being sexually assaulted, that's a different kind of memory where you'll always be traumatised by it. Gwyneth Paltrow did not seem dismissive to Terry's injury or anything caused by the accident. However, she was very clear this accident was not her fault. Now, it would appear that the jury accepted her evidence, and it's not just the case that because she happens to be a narcissist that means that she can be wrong. Narcissists are often right and will utilise the truth, as I've explained to you before, in the pursuit of the prime aims. So Piers Morgan, another narcissist, talks the truth about this one's wife in order to gain control over her, but he's telling the truth. Gwyneth Paltrow may well have told the truth about what happened on that ski slope. She's not telling lies, but she does so once again, of course, for the purposes of the prime aims, to control the jury, to control the person that's suing her, to ensure that in the circumstances she gains the prime aims. You very much ought to watch my video, The Truth, the half-truth and nowhere near the truth with regard to how the narcissist utilises the concept of truth. Jory was not convinced by Craig Ramon, Sanderson's friend, who was the only person who saw the moment of collision. She said that he became very flustered while being cross-examined and his answers kept changing. It was really hard for the jury to understand what was the truth from Craig Ramon's testimony, Jury said. By contrast, Jury found Eric Christiansen, who was the ski instructor, out with Paltrow's son Moses at the time of the crash, to be consistent in his account, which blamed Sanderson. One of the key witnesses for Dury was Irving Scher, Paltrow's biomechanics expert, who created computer simulations which took into account all the eyewitnesses. The simulations showed that the only possibility was that Sanderson was uphill from Paltrow and collided with her. Dury said, In the skier's code, a most important rule, if you're an uphill skier, you have to be avoiding the path of a downhill skier to avoid a collision. During the trial, Paltrow's fashion choices were critiqued almost as much as her testimony, with her earthy tones praised by fashion critics. That, of course, would all be gratefully accepted as positive fuel by a narcissist. Paltrow went viral after saying that the worst she suffered from the crash was leaving half a day of skiing, a moment which instantly became a mean and, of course, belies her absence of emotional empathy. During her cross-examination, Paltrow was asked if she'd ever given intimate gifts to Taylor Swift, apparently referring to a vibrator she put in her Christmas stocking in an online video. Sanderson had originally demanded $3.1 million, but that was lowered to 300000 when a judge dismissed claims Paltrow negligently inflicted emotional distress with punitive damages. That left him with one allegation of simple negligence, the same claim that Paltrow countersued him over, for a token $1 plus legal fees. According to Dury, what really swung it for them was the photograph Sanderson posted on Facebook showing him taking dozens of vacations, including going skiing after the crash. She said, The picture that was painted was that this man was unable to travel, unable to function, able to have friends, yet was able to travel the world. It didn't add up. It was almost black and white at the end. There was no way the collision could have happened the way that it was said to have happened. Davison lashed out and said that Paltrow's fame helped her. She says in the film, I believe the jury had to be slanted in their opinions. Park City didn't want to lose their celebrity status of stars coming in and what they had to offer at Deer Valley. 
Alina Fong, a neuropsychologist who treated Sanderson and testified on his behalf, said it was very disheartening that her recommendation that he go travelling to help his recovery was turned around and used against him as part of an attack. Well, whoever you believe with regard to what happened, the fact is that Gwyneth Paltrow won, and she utilised those lawyers to nullify the threat to control that was posed by the allegations that came from Terry Sanderson. It may well be the case that she utilised the truth as part of that nullification, or it could be that actually she caused the accident and indeed utilised her celebrity superstar status to sway the jury. What do you think? Do you think that Sanderson was at fault? Do you think that Paltrow was at fault? Do you think this was an instance of a narcissist crushing the smaller man, exhibiting her absence of emotional empathy through utilising a hotshot law firm and the essence of her celebrity status? Or was she right to take this action to see off a chancer? Let me know in the comments section. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.